Good day and welcome back to another episode on Game Tech Electronics Hobby House. Today we're going to be doing a new little segment we'll say randomly here and there. The odd time I'll get one of these on my desk. The wife will bring home something from someone uh, and they'll be like, can you repair this? And most of the time I'll say I'll have a look at it. There's been a bunch of videos in the past that I've done that were of this nature. They just arrive on my desk and I get asked, can you fix it? So I'm going to name this one the sh** my wife brings home. Let's have a look here. Um, I've already played around with this a little bit uh, just to see what was going down. We have one wall wart here. I did test it out with the multimeter. It is putting out the 5 volts, 2 amps to it. And here is what we have. It's a tablet. Now this tablet is a hip street pulse. Let's go over to the other camera and have a closer look at it. Okay, so like I said, we do have the wall wart here. Right now I am recording on the Sony AS uh, HDR AS50 uh, as my bench camera for the moment just to kind of see how it does I see a bit of kind of fish eyeing so I, uh, around the edges here but uh, I, I've zoomed in a little bit and it looks like my battery on it's going to die here so we're just going to do a quick little rundown here we have uh, the power button the volume switches we have on the top here uh, we have uh, HDMI um, uh, headphone jack, we have the micro SD card slot, the microphone, the uh, micro USB port, as well as the DC 5 volt power uh, plug as well there. And that is it. And the speaker is on the back here. So with this unit, basically what it wasn't doing was it wasn't charging. Uh, and I tested it out first and yeah, it really wasn't. It did not want to charge. I'd get it to the point where it would turn on, but then all the life would just get sucked out of it. Basically what had happened was there was just too many things going on in the background of this unit. It had five different profiles. It had the same download downloaded like 50 times in it. And it wasn't a small download, so all the space was being used up uh, when the programs itself needed to update. So there was no updates done. So what I did is I took four hours to get the whole unit completely updated, and then I tried the charging process again. And lo and behold, instead of taking like 16 hours like my first time, it only took... Uh, a fraction of that time, I think it was four or five hours, and it was back up to 100%. Um, not the fastest charging tablet in the world, but the battery does last quite a while, so I was quite happy about that. It is a 400 milliamp hour, or sorry, 4000 milliamp hour battery in the unit, running at 3.7 volts. So I did take uh, the uh, my Micronta. Um, multimeter there and I tested the battery uh, when it was uh, pretty uh, low at the time and it was only uh, charging up to 3.2 percent and then it was like looping it was doing a little boot loop and it was having issues because it couldn't produce enough energy to kick in so now that I have it powered up to a hundred percent what I think I'll do is I will take it apart one more time here and uh, then I will um, kind of check out and see what uh, the voltage on the battery is. If it's a nice stable 3.7 then we know there was just too much going on in the background of this tablet uh, which could have been remedied with just a basic factory reset and then update the system and then uh, re-download your apps and everything. Okay, so my AS50 um, battery just died, so I'm going to swap that out. I will be right back. 
before I forget, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up button, thumbs down button, whatever you want. Post some questions below. So it does have a full charge right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it apart. I want to test that battery again and see if it is actually on a 3.7 volt. Uh, if it's still at the 3.2, I might decide to swap the battery out. But I think after all the updates and everything that went on on the system, it's now functioning as it should. So I just think it was just a lack of knowledge on the user's part of how to keep up and maintain a tablet, um, which is common. So you just hope things work, and then when they don't, you toss them away and go buy something new, right? So let's see if we can't get this back to where it was uh, functioning from day one, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so for taking apart these uh, the Hip Street uh, Pulse, just on the top here, we're going to have two screws here. So there's one right here and one right here. So I'll just go ahead and remove those and oh, I'll just go ahead and remove those now. And the great thing about, I think my camera's a bit too low here. Uh, so sorry if I bump the camera. Still getting used to it. Maybe I'll just tilt this and go this way. There we go. And that way you can see what's going on. So the great thing about these, uh, I guess you can call them cheaper tablets, is they're really easy to get into. So what I usually try to do is go where the plastic is the weakest. So up along the top here is where it's going to be at its weakest. And then we're just going to try and find... way to get our you can use a smudger a guitar pick whatever you want but I just use my nail and just slowly pry at it and then from there actually you know what I'll use this guy here it's just a little cell phone repair pick and uh, all you got to do is just get it under that lip and then just slide it down and break those tabs off and then now we can go up, up along the side here and the only part is this power button and volume button will pop down don't worry about it let's go along the unit you'll be able to put that back in afterwards now I didn't undo the bottom here but you don't need to you just pop it up and with this unit here uh, there is a cable for the speaker so we're going to want to open it up in a folding manner so we don't wreck that speaker and there we go now we have it open it was that easy and then we can find the power where did the power oh there it is underneath Let me just bring that up a little bit here now you can see what's going on oh a little too far bring it back in still trying to get used to yeah now you can actually see on the AS50 how I have this kind of fisheye look there okay so the great thing about these batteries here is it is a, a two-wire battery, so you don't need uh, any special actual replacement battery. You can just go ahead and buy yourself uh, a two-wire lithium-ion battery that's 3.7 volts and then whatever milliamp hour you want. You could go with a bigger one, but you got to remember you got to have room for... Um, so it doesn't hit the speaker here but other than that you can kind of gauge you could probably get away with one probably just a little bit bigger on the unit itself uh, I'll be measuring right from here uh, now I should actually zoom in a little bit so you can actually see what I'm doing here so I do like the fact that I can zoom in 
with the AS50 without having to uh, bump the camera any. So I do like that feature. It is connected on my cell phone. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to get my multimeter going here. I have it set to volts. I got that there, that there. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this on the negative and positive terminals here, or solder bulbs, balls, and we are sitting at 4.24 volts, 4.25. So that's interesting. But it's definitely got 4.24 volts into it, so maybe it's back to working. So there you go, you can see that it is reading the 4.24, which I did not get before, so I'm quite confused why uh, it was in that little boot loop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drain it again, try charging it. If it works, then great. If it doesn't, I'll be back in a moment and I will let you know exactly what happened, but I think it should be good. To me, it looked like there's just too much junk going on in the background of the unit. It didn't have enough space to basically load anything or do anything. So at this point, I'm going to call this one done. I'm going to say that, yeah, it was just too much stuff was in the background. The battery got drained way too low, and there just wasn't enough juice pumping into it to get it to boost up and completely charge. Uh, I had no problems charging it uh, a few times after uh, I played with it. There was nothing really going on, so it could have just been one of those things where uh, if the unit was um, powering on, something was happening. I don't know exactly, but it was almost in uh, a charging boot loop at the beginning. I'll have to uh, see if I can find out any information on that as well, but at this point, it's working correctly, so I'm going to give it back to them. Uh, of course, no charge, uh, thanks to my wife. Um, but I'll make sure that uh, they're aware that basically I did nothing besides test it. It could be a battery issue, or it could be uh, something to do with the charging circuit on the board, and basically just let it charge up don't let it get all the way down, you know, when it gets to half power. Okay, so I'm able to charge the unit with the micro USB port as well as the wall wart. Updates are usually pretty heavy on a tablet, so even after four hours of um, usage on the, the tablet to get everything completely updated, uh, it only dropped down to about 46% when after I did that, I plugged it into the charger again, and it charged up with no problem. So I'm going to completely drain the battery again, this time, and see if I can get it to produce that little boot loop at the beginning. And if I can, I'll post about it, but uh, yeah, at this point, I'm going to go with it's, it's ready to go home. So, thanks for watching everyone, you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and we'll see you next time. Take care, eh?